Hello everyone, this is Nancy again coming back to you with a brand new dipping video. Today I am going to share with you how to do a basic dipping for holiday season. First of all, we're going to do is apply the tips on the nails. Make sure the tips, it will go straight sidewall to sidewall with the nails. You don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. I am using Insta tips. So then that way I can able to get the shape perfect and a nice, especially in the salon. We're going to compare the, the length of the nails at the tips and then we'll cut them down and make sure you're going to compare with, you know, left hand to the right hand to make sure they are even length and reshape them to make sure they are the same shape and the length are the same as well. So, in this uh, video, I am going to share like two nails to apply the tips on and you're going to use the sand bead to smooth all the connection between the natural nails and the tips. The smoother, the thinner and the blend you do better when you're dipping because uh, dipping powder is so particle so you don't want to get really thick and really um, rich really thick that will affect the dipping powder after you smooth and fire them and you make sure you compare them the left hand and the right hand again to make sure they are even length and let get dipping and I am starting with the number one bonding this is gonna help dehydrated the nails before you start dipping we go right in the number two gel base of dipping and applies 90% of the nail plates. So it's really a, just a hair close to the cuticles and I will sprinkle the clear powders to build a structure of the nails. And we repeat the same nails, the same uh, techniques for the nails, all the rest of the nails. So. Again, apply the number two, sprinkle the clear powder. You can also dip it in, you know, if you would like to. But then sometime with the longer nails, if you dip in with a, a smaller jars, which is like only one jar or smaller jars, this might make the uh, it, the number two gels by might be push up buying is you know a smaller jar. So I. The best way if you can sprinkle it is gonna be awesome. So I'm finished with the last nail. So it's a pinky. It's just video I'm doing it's one hand as usual. So then you can see the visions of it. And oop, you seeing that I have just a little bit of the mess up right here. I'm using my fine, just buff it off. So I am going to do a second time of a number twos and this time I do right in the middle of the nails. The reason I do that is because I am building the apex for the nails and I do not want to be on both sides to be thicker and bulky. Therefore I just build right in the centers of the nails and sprinkle with it. Keep in mind if you have a client have really flat nail bed or really a big um, hump, you want to do this step more than one time and so therefore you viewing the c curve in the apex of the nails better because prevent from is breaking or um, the look of the nail the breaking is because you don't have the um, viewing the apex properly so with dipping you can completely achieve that look like the same with our liquid and powder acrylic. So they're both acrylic, but this dipping using a concept of liquid essential, which is resins and polymers. The poly polymers is a little bit more is, um, particle than acrylics, uh, liquid and powder. So they all from polymers, formulas. So we going to be in uh, the last nail, the pinky, and I am going to build one more time as the three times of a C curve and the apex. So now it's really cool with tip and tricks. I'm gonna using number three 
to salarate and dry all of um, the clear powders that I'm dipping it on. So now I'm going to start finding them to build the apex of the nails before you dipping because if you're dipping it right in away it will help it not it looks still okay but then it's gonna give it a hard time to uh, make it smooth because sometimes the powder is so particle when it flow and if you dip too many coat to fill it in all the edges and lumps and bumps and by the time you fire, all the powder is going to come up. So the best to do it first before you dipping in uh, the solid colors that the clients prefer. So I shape the nails both sides. I always hold my fires up 90 degrees to keep the shape nice and um, really precise without a bulky look on both sides of the nails. Because mostly of us get that... Um, troubleshooting i had that myself um, back then but continue uh, educations and improve my skill it's helped me uh, so much so i that's why i would like to share with all of you for especially for beginners who start dipping also this using for both structures uh, for dipping or liquid can powders using the same technique so now i'm going one more time to compare make sure all the nails are the same before i doing as the color dip and um, using a sand bead is help me go a long way because sometimes we, you can use all different beads like uh, firing them down but sand bead is the safest way for both beginners and experts uh, because the powder is so particle and flow and you don't want to using a too sharp or embraces uh, e-fire beads that might take all your powder off so as I you seeing it, my apex building really nicely without make it look so thick and bulky on both sides. I'm just gently just circle and cleaning up all that uneven surface of the nails first before I going to dip into the solid color. So this time we're going to do a nude and have a burgundy color. It's just really beautiful, simple, and then we're gonna do some crystal placements. Um, you saw my video before that I did um, crystal placements with number four and number three. This time we are going to do is a little bit different using a glue gels because the glue gels and a top coat of gels, you LED light gel top coat will help going a long way because I get more time to play with the crystals. So after I done all everything, you can see it's just number two gels bay. I am going to apply it 90%. Like, I would say it's just a hair or I apply it completely, uh, it's up to you, but then you dip it in like 90%. But this time you're seeing my techniques, instead of dipping in a 45 degree angle, I just basically just turn the hands upside down and the fingers were touching your surface of the powder instead of dipping in. So this is avoiding from uh, pushing and wrinkle my powders. So you're seeing that, I just like bend it down and then gently dip it. So going to repeat for the, all the nails and the first coat of the nude colors. And I think I'm using a chisel, but I'm not sure. That I don't remember what color is it, but the chisel nail art have a really good um, powder solids collection as well as the ombre. So I'm going to apply all of them and then we're going to repeat twice. For the color to make sure the color is solid. So uh, for those of you that do not want to uh, have the, the clear coat and like a cap the color so you can do three coats of the solid colors or you can do two coat of solid colors and then one coat of a clears. It's really is, is up to you. Um, I would suggest with the deep with the darker colors instead of afraid of having a really cloudy uh, little cloudy uh, spot on the nails like a darker nails right now you can sprinkle in and then I usually do three coats and I don't do any of um, a clear coat but it's really flexible it's really depend as um, 
we're going to the second coat right now for the solid colors and make sure you don't miss any spot you make sure you go any uh, edges of the nail so then when you after you dipping it won't missing any uh, spot any edges I'm going to beautiful burgundy colors. This is perfect for the holidays or every day. You can wear nude and dark colors pretty much every day, every season now. It doesn't limit um, of any colors you want. You can see that after I finish with that dark burgundy colors, it's got a little bit of residue stain on my brush. So I'm using a little uh, paper towels and uh, wipe it off before I put it back in and sprinkle the second coat. You see, oh, I got a little bit of, um, you know, boo-boo there. So then I just tap using my fingers, just tap it down. So then the powders go right back because it's still wet. So I can just like touch, tap a little bit. And uh, you can see I am going to be a, doing a third coat because I not, I'm not going to do a clear coat on it because I want to keep it the true look of the color. A burgundy the clear coat is good but sometimes it depends on the weathers or different state you are is might make it cloudy if I don't put the number two gel spray so I'm applying the number two gel spray this is going to be a third times of applying the number two gel base on and I'm going to sprinkle the clear powder to protect my uh, solid colors so when I file them it's not gonna it's really rare that I have a chance uh, to mess up my nails so clear is gonna be a really good um, life saver I have to say that so repeat with all four nails except the rings fingers the ring fingers uh, we're gonna do Usually when the rings finger on all the nails, it's getting really um, dark color. I do the last because I don't want to stain my brush. And now I'm going back to apply the number two. I have so many people asking why do I do number two first um, before the number three because I want to make sure the ratios of uh, dipping powders and uh, liquid essentials, resin are um, balance so i apply number two first before i apply my number three to help seal completely my powders and it will balance when i apply the activator number three it will prevent from cracking and also it give a really uh, long lasting nails for dipping powders with the clients can go three weeks four weeks is really pain when they're going to come back to see you so i'm go right into the number three and accelerate it and by the time you've done all 10 nails, apply the number three, you're ready for uh, filing them because they dry really fast. And I shape the nails straight at 90 degree. I already pre-shape it before I uh, dip it in. So it's really help, guys. You don't want to do it in, like shaping everything after because then you might accidentally take off a lot of colors of your dipping. So you want to five it first and shape them first nice before you dip and then now after you dip you just need to just touch it up you can see that it's just really literally a uh, filing them without too much of filing and I just straighten them and just make them more precise always hold the fire at 90 degree everybody have a different technique this is just the technique that I would like to share with you so hope it helps some for beginners or some experts um i love this color though it's i can wear it every season every day so it's continue finishing is all five nails you see when you do 10 nails it's by the time you're done with this it doesn't take so long and with number three excel uh, accelerate is really fast so i'm using ex essentials uh, dipping essential from a chisel nail art you can find it from your local supplies or check them out chisel nail art and i am going to using my sand bead so this is a sand bead i'm using a medium grade which is not too fine and not too coarse i don't use a coarse one because it's too hard for 
uh, dipping powder. So with this, you see that my motion of the circle are just going like circles around my cuticles. Why I do that? Because then I'll keep the shape and the apex of the nails is really nice. I do not need to take any apex off. I just need to clean my cuticle area to prevent from lifting. And so that way they won't uh, not lifting, you know, issue and problem. And then I will go back with one of my beads so then I can clean them up uh, really close to the cuticles. But you can see that is the nail structure is really nice. And when you build a structure of uh, the apex like this, the dipping powder will last you a long time. It's not going to break. And it's beautiful as a liquid and powder acrylic. So that is um, it's another beautiful uh, part of a dipping as well. And you see that my motions for the nails, like this nail show better because it's darker nail. You see that I just going up from the left, from right to the left. It could be from a different size. Um, you know, it's just from the right to the left and it just smooth them out. You see that the all the dust powders are flaking off. I minimum like five of them. You can't even see much of dust off. Basically, I dust them only. Like I'm buffing them. I'm, have, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to say I'm buffing them only, not dusting them. And uh, you can see it's really little has come out because when you apply the number two gel spray, it thin and it good. You don't need to do uh, too much too much filing because there are not much of extra powder for you to do. I just buffing them using uh, the five, uh, the medium grit beads of the um, sanding beads. And you can see that I'm going to using ceramics. You have a ceramics or you have a really fine bit that you can use it. Um, whatever works convenient for you. But I do not recommend the coarse beads because they are too harsh for the dipping powders. So I go, this one I'm using is a uh, five green of um, ceramic beads. I have so many uh, different them. Uh, of the beads, so it just really depends. With liquid and powders, I using a different beads, and then uh, there are so many different shape of the beads that it works. And it depends on the client's nail bed. Some clients have really flat nail beds at first to start with. Some clients have really nice. So these clients have um, uh, good enough um, the C curve. And it's still flat though, and I still have to build it up, but it looks really good after we finish with the dipping. As you see, now I'm going with my really smooth five bits. You can see my circle is just like surround the cuticles. I just want to make sure I blend the cuticles, I clean up the cuticles really well, I prevent from a dipping and lifting. Then that's way it will. Uh, help so much and the clients usually go in three or four weeks before they come back and the nails is growing really nice and uh, long that without any issue or lifting at all the prepping is really important guys like before I put the tips on uh, we preps um, really nice and well without uh, finding too much of clients nails but prepping and clean up the cuticles important some of the video that I have in the past is have that how I uh, gently prepping the nail. Sometimes do too much of prepping, it doesn't mean that it's gonna, the nail is going to last. So you want to make sure that you prep it properly. And after I'm finished with all filing with the E5 beads, I'm going to buff the nails. The buff technique is really cool. You just buff it from essentials down. And it's really gentle. Um, you don't have to do it right on the top too much because you might buff the ace packs. It's flat. So um, I use it using it from the center of the nails and then I buff it down and dust it all off. I do not send the client to wash their hands first. I'm going to finish everything first before I send them to wash their hand. Apply number three activators on all of the nails. Before you do that, make sure you compare all the nails are left to the right hand is even before you finish because then you don't have to reshape it them later. So apply enough amount of number three you do not want to do too overflow like too much on it it can cause a cracking issue for the nails 
so I'm going to finish four nails in the nude colors because this I do not do designs uh, crystal on this so I'm gonna finish a uh, number four first coat of number four I am going to do it thin and really fast okay and like a few stroke and fast and let it go you don't want to go back and forth because then you're gonna harden your brush by accelerate and uh, contaminating number three on the nail surface to the number four so after you outline the number four and then in the meantime i'm waiting for the first coat i am going to using uh gel's based coat gel based coat i mean is led keying so i'm going to apply thin coat and i'm going to key under the led light for about 10 seconds and then using after 10 seconds i'm using a uh, condensed glue gel and apply one thin coat uh, generous of it you don't want to do too thick because it's a condensed so it will help hold your crystal so nice all as well as the uh, 3d crystal for the flat back and 3d i'm going to using no wipe top coat and apply it on the top of the glue gels i haven't cured any glue gel yet it's still wet underneath and apply the crystal on place nicely the reason i did a uh, top coat on the top of the glue gel to kind of sandwich it really nicely because the glue gels and the top coat will help grips my crystal base nicely and it's and suck them in so it wrap around the base so then it's really amazing technique that it will keep your crystal stay in nice place second that when i'm using a no wipe top coat is really help that i don't have to go back and go to any little edges of the crystal and try to put the top coat on because all else gonna get a tacky um sticky uh, feeling so you don't want that so this will help your crystal stay nice and sparkle um, I believe that I did the uh, number four top coat for dippings done for four nails two times the first coat you make sure you're doing it thin and fast the second coat you can go back and um, touch up anything that missing so uh, going to this nails you see that how simple and beautiful of it. I apply the big crystal in the centers and then I go in the top one and gradually doing a smaller toward to the end of the nails. And cure it for 60 seconds when you're happy with this. And I'm going to using a precision glue with the dual head. This one I'm using it just a tip. And I squeeze just a little bit of uh, precision glues out this is a perfect uh, glue uh, to help filling all the gaps and edges between crystals so then that way the crystal would not catching on the hair or the client's clothes they won't have to worry about anything um, affects their normal activities so after happy with this you pop in the lamp for 60 seconds and then you're all done I'm just applying the cuticle oil around to nurturing the cuticles and just wipe it off with the alcohol and piece of paper to make sure that the oil is not going to be too oily. And then we are going to take some pictures. And picture is important. Picture with a thousand words because then sometimes you have a great work and you didn't get to do a picture because then people don't look you, they can't look you up on uh, social media. They can't see you. So it's just like a couple minutes of taking a picture is really help. I put a really nice background and usually I leave my hand up a little bit, uh, maybe, um, you know, five inches, I guess, uh, of the surface of the station and then hold the nails so I can focus on nails without focus on the backgrounds and if I have any nails I need to reshape it or even them or straight them or precise them I can do that thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye bye